This is the Hudson River. Flowing south from the Adirondack Mountains, these waters will eventually hit New York City and continue on into the Atlantic Ocean. And on a day like today, it is beautiful. But the river can also be dangerous, especially in harsh New England winters. And when summer storms hit, even experienced navigators risk a crash. Which leads me here, Saugerties Lighthouse. The keepers who lived in this home considered it their sacred duty to keep sailors safe. And in the 1870s, a newspaper article printed around the country told the tale of two brave keepers who repeatedly plunged into the Hudson to save the shipwrecked. As the article said, if the world knows little of its heroes, it knows less of its heroines. So who were the heroines of the lighthouse? Long before highways, rivers were used for commercial and everyday travel, and it was the government's job to keep traffic flowing. In 1834, Congress appropriated $5,000 to build a lighthouse in Saugerties, back then a busy port. The bid was awarded to a local firm who built the whole thing for a lowball offer under three grand. Apparently, the first lighthouse wasn't as nice as this one. Abraham Persons, the first keeper of Saugerties Light, saw his new home and decided, all things considered, he'd rather live in town. Once the boss in DC got wind of this, he personally traveled all the way from Washington to give Persons the boot. But maybe Persons had a point about the living conditions, because in 1867, Congress appropriated $25,000 to build a new lighthouse for Saugerties. This one. It was finished in 1869. All in all, 21 keepers tended to the lighthouse, but it was two teenage sisters who moved into the new house in 1869 that became famous. Thanks to their heroism, talkative riverboat captains, and a curious journalist, we still tell their story today. In 1878, newspapers in New York, New Orleans, Chicago, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and a dozen papers in landlocked Kansas printed syndicate versions of a column that originally appeared in the New York Sunday Mercury. And I can see why it went old-timey viral. Just listen to this. If the world knows little of its heroes, it knows less of its heroines, so declared an old Hudson River pilot who had for 30 years felt his torturous way along the serpentine stream. When he looked into that far off way, the writer knew he was thinking of something interesting. He was thinking of Kate and Ellen Crowley. The old sailor said, their lamp is always burning. As for saving lives, I know they're done it many a time. To learn more, the sailor told the journalist to head down to Staten Island and talk to the government lighthouse bureau. And so, the clerk in the inspector's office said he had no doubt the old pilot's statements were true. Sisters Kate and Ellen Crowley were born into a family of lighthouse keepers, and in 1865, their father Daniel Crowley assumed the post at Saugerties Light. It wasn't uncommon for lighthouses to be passed down from generation to generation, and often, hardworking daughters and wives would be just as respected as hardworking sons. It's hardworking that's the key. In fact, in the mid-1800s, a young Rhode Island lighthouse resident named Ida Lewis became famous for life-saving, plucking her first sailor from the water when she was only 12. Kate wasn't the first female lightkeeper in Saugerties. That was Dorcas Schoonmaker. Dorcas's husband was keeper before her, and she did such a good job taking charge of his duties before he died that boatmen successfully petitioned the government to allow Dorcas to become keeper. Still, apparently Kate was the best of the best. The article went on, as to the manner in which the lighthouse is kept, it is unexcelled by any other man or woman. Accounts are always kept right, the light is always burning, and Miss Crowley is the very best kind of a keeper. Go and see her, she is a model watcher. Our intrepid reporter went back upstate in true 1870s style. He hopped a Catskills night boat and would reach Saugerties by early morning. His night boat captain knew all about the Crowleys. It's two gals, got grit enough for I've seen them, pulling away a great heavy rowboat that no river men would care to handle in one of them gales that come sweeping down through the mountains. The captain recalled a dangerous scene five years earlier when two storms converged. He saw a shipping boat overturned and two men struggling in stormy waters. The captain said, hardly a minute elapsed before two female forms were fluttering around a small boat by the lighthouse. In another minute, it was launched. In the savage thunder and lightning, Kate hauled both men into the boat while Ellen held it steady. The pilot said, those gals are bricks and no mistake. 
Kate was only 15 and Ellen 17 when their family moved into the brand new lighthouse. Locals knew all about them. I should like to know who doesn't know them hereabouts. They are always in their boat, and people have come to think that they really belong to the water more than they do the land. The same year the family moved in, Ellen and her mother attempted to rescue a boy who'd gone swimming beyond his depth, but their boat capsized. Ellen swallowed a lot of water and her health was never the same after. She was always available for emergency situations, but it was Kate who took charge. With so many daring stories of bravery buzzing in his head, the journalist finally made it to Socrates' light to meet the famous Crowley sisters. A single knock brought to the door a young lady who replied that she was the person asked for and invited the visitor into the front room, which was used as a parlor, plainly but neatly furnished. For some reason, and we'll never know why, Kate wasn't eager to talk about her life-saving exploits. She'd only discuss how happy she was at the lighthouse. She told the reporter, in the spring, ice comes down and threatens their little house, but she is never afraid and thinks it a pleasure when anyone is in danger to do what she and her sister can to relieve them. Ellen joined the conversation and, surprise, surprise, was just as modest. We are simply two girls trying to do our duty in this quiet place. As the reporter wrapped up his visit, he noted their romantic spot would be apt to induce visitors to call, but the sisters insisted the lighthouse was an old institution possessing no interest. The article ended, At parting, the heroic sisters asked that they might not be given too much publicity. The writer promised he would not say anything they did not merit. And as he was told still more of their efforts after he had left their island home, he feels that he has not violated his promise. The story was published, and even though it was nationally syndicated, it seemed like life did go on as normal for Kate and Ellen. Ships sailed by, seasons changed, and the years passed. Kate kept the light until 1885, and then her brother James took over. A lot changed in the years after Kate's passing. Steam heat, electricity, automated lights all eventually found their way to the lighthouse, and in 1954, the Coast Guard automated the lights. Keepers were no longer necessary. By 1964, the building was in such disrepair, the Coast Guard was ready to knock it down. That could have been the end of Sogarty's light. But this building helped keep locals safe for generations, and the town showed up happy to repay the favor. The Coast Guard handed the tiny river island over to New York State. The state then sold the property to the Sogarty's Lighthouse Conservancy for one dollar. But a member of the Conservancy said, what we bought was a pile of bricks and rubble ready to fall into the river. Over years and years of restoration work, volunteers hauled away tons of debris, hauled in tons of new bricks, and local craftsmen completed all the finishing touches. In 1990, the lighthouse was officially recommissioned by the Coast Guard and outfitted with a solar-powered light. We're a long way from whale oil, and these days you can stay here. Sogarty's Lighthouse has two guest rooms, a cozy kitchen and cell phone reception. But one thing hasn't really changed, and that's the view. From up in the tower, you can see for miles along the Hudson River Valley and take in the incredible views of the Catskill Mountains. It's hard to imagine what it had to take for lighthouse keepers to do their work over the course of history. Hauling whale oil up and down ladders, keeping watch all night long without electricity, always ready to act fast and risk your life. No wonder people love lighthouses. It's lucky that this space was saved, and lucky so many people came together a century after its most famous residents thought the home was of no interest. With all due respect to the heroines of the lighthouse, I'm afraid I have to disagree. Are you looking to make your home really light up the neighborhood? Rocket Mortgage can help with a cash out refinance. You can learn more at rocketmortgage.com. So who were the heroines of the lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? Sir, we're filming something.